Welcome back everyone. Today, I'm going to be showing you just how quick plans change. So, you know, when you do all the stuff that we do, you kind of halfway plan out your day and you know what you got to be doing. But just in an instant, something will come up and interrupt those plans. So, what I'm talking about is it's really not that big a deal, but it just shows you that it's hard to plan your day when you've got a farm you got animals and everything like that so we moved the chickens and realized that um there's a section of fence here that didn't have no power on it so i got to looking i found a broke wire well while i'm at it i've tested the power on the fence and i noticed that i'm not quite got the power that i'm supposed to have so i'm going to take this little bit of time here to fix this broken wire which is just gonna be a temporary fix because I really, I need to fix it better than what I'm gonna fix it today. But this will get us by. And uh, I noticed, like I said, I noticed that we don't have the power that we should have on the fence. So I'm gonna make a round all the way around the fence and just check for broken insulators or anything like that on the fence and see what's going on there. So anyways, I thought I'd bring you along, but it's because, well, why not? <laughs> But anyways, let's grab uh, a few uh, insulators and some tools here. I'm gonna get my fence tester, which is here, and cram it in my pocket. And then grab a few insulators. So I have a dedicated fence toolbox. This has nothing but fencing supplies in it. I've got hammers, I've got insulators, I've got the handle for the uh, um, ratchets on the high tensile wire. I've got, I've actually got several different types of insulators in here. I've got pliers, you know, you name it. If it's something we use for fencing, it's in that toolbox right there. So it's always nice and handy. And I can throw it in the back of the truck or on the bed of the Kubota or whatever and just take it with me when I know I need to work on a fence. Um, so, let me grab my insulators out of here because I don't think we're going to have any broken wires anywhere else. And if we do, we'll just go back for it. But um, I'm going to grab me a pocket full of insulators for T-post and uh, something to crimp this wire together with. And we'll get started with it. So I just went and unplugged the fence. That's one thing you make sure you do before you work on the fence is unplug your fence, your fence charger. So... This broke wire is pretty much my fault because this is the wire that goes by the gate. Turn around and show them the gate, Jacob. This connects this side of the gate to the other side of the gate over there. And uh, I've just got it laid out here in the pasture where it should be buried. But we found out that it's broke right here. And... Um, so I'm going to crimp this thing back together and then wrap it real good in some electrical tape. And then I'm, I would just go ahead and fix it right today. But you know, sometimes when you're having to make repairs like this, you know, you just do what you got to do to get by with it until you do have time to actually fix it right. And that's part of the problem here is I fixed this here a while back and I haven't had time to go back and fix it right yet. And I really should go ahead and do that today. But y'all, I really just don't have time. We've got 6,000 other things that we've got to get done today. And uh, working on a fence ain't supposed to be one of them. So, um, so we're just going to leave this laying on top of the ground for now. It will at least get power back to this side of the fence so I can have power on my chicken netting. And that's the main goal. I'm honestly not too worried about our cows not having power on it. Of course, if they go to test in the fence, they may realize that it don't have power and then, uh, then they might start to get out. But our cows respect the wire pretty good. At least for now. <clears throat> so, I've got these two wires stripped here. And I'm going to take 
one of these crimps. So one on this side. And then put this wire in this. And then it takes these special pliers here. And we'll crimp that thing down. That's a good snug crimp. Then I've got some really thick, heavy duty electrical tape here. And we're just gonna give this a good wrap for now. Like I said, I need to redo this anyways and completely bury everything under the ground and uh, get that right. But for today's repair, we're just gonna make it do the best we can with what we've got right here and the time we've got to work in. You can tell when you get some good electrical tape, it's sort of got a flex to it. This right here is 3M brand. And in my opinion, that's some of the best electrical tape there is because the, 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 the tape itself flexes. And so it keeps a good, nice contour, smooth contour as you're wrapping. Now, while we're at it, I don't think we'll need this and this. So we're gonna leave those laying there. And we're gonna take a bag of insulators. Well, I don't guess we're gonna need our fence test because I don't got it plugged in. But we're just gonna take our bag of insulators and make a round around this fence because I guess since there's not been no power on this. This also brings power over to where the barn is. And, uh, well, the little calf has been in the wire over here and broke the wire, but we're gonna fix that real quick. This is what we normally lock the, cat, the cows up in and the horses when it gets uh, winter time so our pastures can take a break. But right now, this year, we haven't been using that just yet. And uh, the little calf apparently got into it and tore the wire down and broke a cup, broke the insulators. So I've just got to fix this real quick and then we'll get on around the rest of the fence. Did you break the metal off the post? No, this is one of those fiberglass posts. I mean, did he? So it ain't like the chicken wire where you have to smash, smash no. it down though with your foot. No. This post right here is just here to hold them gate ends up anyways. It's not really a support post. Just got it there for that reason right there. So you got sticks right there for you to put the fence on. Yep. That's the only purpose that post serves. Got in this side. What in the world? That's got twisted. Oh, that post is... That post is broke too. bad thing with these fiberglass posts like this once they get some age on them they start breaking all right well we're gonna start right here and keep walking so as we walk around the fence what we're checking for is just making sure all of our Insulators are looking good. Nothing's broke. Making sure we don't have no wire touching the post anywhere or nothing shorting out. 
So right here, something. Check. That's supposed to be slid right there to insulate the actual hot wire from the brace wire. So it was touching right there. That nerd looks good. Well, we found a little problem. Show right up into here, Jacob. Evidently a deer or something got caught in this cause the insulator's not broke, but you can see right there on the back side of the wire where it's been arcing out against this post. Um, so that's exactly why we walking around the whole fence. And we're not gonna slide that in, I'm gonna have to take it off. But that's exactly why we're walking around the whole fence is because little stuff like that, you would never see it unless you did walk around the whole fence. And a lot of times, you know, I mean, it's just a quick, simple fix, just as that. But that can kill the power on your whole thing. Um, so we'll keep on checking. But one thing I want to note is, you know, a lot of people may ride around their fence. And that's fine and dandy. But you can't see everything by just riding around your fence. So it's best to just walk it and take your time and make sure you actually look at every single fence post and see what's going on with it. So I found another one. Of course, now this one really shouldn't be causing any power issues because it's out here away from the fence, I mean, away from the post. But we're going to go ahead and fix it. But I guarantee that's from a deer or something. Probably come through here and hung it. it Caused it to break out like that. Well, as you might expect, I found even more problems. <laughs> now, it ain't been that long ago that we were down here, and all of this is fine. But all the way through here... Seems like I bet a deer or something got caught in this fence. And it's tore all to pieces. Look at that. Look at that all down through there. Holy, that one was hard. Looks like we got another one down there to fix. Oh, wait. I gotta grab these. Pull these in, William. So you can see this wire right here. That's what's been tied onto it to run power to our garden across the creek. Because it's just right over there. And there's but, the creek. Yep. But back in the early fall, I discovered that evidently this wire right here has a short in it somewhere and it's shorting out on the ground because I um, was losing power on the fence pretty good. And when I unhooked that wire to test it, the power come back on. So that's something right there on our to-do list before a gardening season starts again. So here's another one, and this post has even been over, so that makes me think that deer have been coming through here. From and, the garden. Well, they wouldn't be over it. Well, yeah, they could be over there eating that clover. And then they jump, jump. It looks like it's eat down pretty good. Yeah, it does. But you see that? That's directly touching that metal post, so that's definitely causing this fence to ground out. So that's probably part of the reason why we hadn't been having any power, I mean, good power on the fence. We had power on it, just not good power. Yeah, not as good as the goat fence, well, three shears on. 
I had noticed that the power on the fence probably wasn't what it should be because every time you use that chicken netting, you know, it just naturally is touching on the ground somewhere because of the way it's made. And I always know that when the power's slacking on our fence because you don't hear it popping like it's supposed to. Because if this fence has got good power on it, that chicken net across the bottom of the ground, wherever it touches, which you don't want it to touch, but I mean, sometimes it's just kind of inevitable. But if it's touching somewhere, it's usually got a pretty strong pop and it hasn't been doing that. So we have another one. I mean, my goodness, these daggone insulators are just a pain in the butt. And they're junk. <laughs> they're junk. Well, it's amazing how many's broke. I mean, that one right there is a dead short up against that post too. So that's, uh, it's not good. Nope. We ought to have some pretty decent power on this thing once we get done here. Mm-hmm. Well, once it's done now, we gotta go back to the house. Why? I said lunch is done, we gotta go back to the house. Oh, lunch is done. Can a stick be killing power too? Huh? Can a stick touching the ground be killing power too? Yeah. Oh. And that's it? It won't kill a lot, but it can't kill the power. This whole ground's frozen over here. Yeah, down here in the shade and the, and the hollow froze. There's another one. Yet again. This one wasn't touching the post though. This one was just kind of hanging out by itself. So, so this one didn't have any insulators on it? But the insulator was just gone. It's down there. Yep, right there at least. Broke. That back clip broke off. Might as well replace that one. It's still doing its job, but the back's broke. Well, that little clip's broke. While we're here with new insulators, might we'll as well it. do it. See, it ain't touching the foot, so. That back looks so hard to do. It is. It's still doing its job too. But it's just like the other one. Yep, That's might as well right. fix it. We're gonna have to buy some other bag of insulators to have on here. <laughs> you don't got another one in that, in that toolbox? Nope, that was all I had. Well, I mean the fence box. Get it? Yeah. I just looked at these the other day and I think all of those right up here are good. Plug her up. I can tell the difference in the way it's popping. Yeah. So we're back to where we started. I get my fence tester out. Let's see if we're done any good. 9.9, y'all. Is that how it's supposed to be? That's exactly. That's as high as this meter reads, so. Yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get. Huh? Well, we got it fixed. Don't do like us. And just kind of neglect your fence until it's too late. You need to, uh. I hope this, this video here will inspire you to keep a check on your fence. Do a little better job than what we do. I mean, we do a decent job of keeping check on it, but as you can see, there was a lot of stuff broke that I didn't even have no idea was broke. Had we checked this on a normal basis, we might have would have caught it all, you know, caught it little by little instead of all at one time. Mm -hmm. But um, 
anyways y'all that's just how it goes um you just never know you never know what the day is going to bring when you've got animals and uh you know something like this is it kind of takes top priority because you got to have this power on the fence for your animals to stay in the fence and not only that we've got to have power for our chicken net because that's what protects these chickens from something getting them and the guineas protect them from the hawks getting them yeah yeah they i think them guineas protect them from aerial uh predators but that uh that electric netting that protects them from everything else so we got to make sure we got power but um i'm gonna hook up the electric netting and hope y'all enjoyed this video and always let it be a reminder that your plans can change real quick when you've got animals and uh you know it's just something we have to deal with especially when we grow what we grow um but anyways y'all i hope you enjoyed and i appreciate y'all watching and we'll catch you on the next one